Uh, this is uh, the end of the eighth week of the legislative session. Uh, today, Thursday afternoon, marks the halfway point for this session, a session that, uh, if things aren't done right, could have monumental um, repercussions for the people of the state of Oklahoma, our children, our senior citizens, those who care about public safety and, and transportation, uh, understand, they are acutely aware of the fact that the state of Oklahoma is in a financial crisis. Cuts, uh, cuts to our public schools and our, and our hospitals and health care providers have devastated the state of Oklahoma and our caucus for the last eight weeks have, uh, have been trying desperately to get the majority party and the governor to put significant revenues on the table to be able to balance this state's budget, to dig our way out of the hole, and to be able to reinvest in education, health care, and public safety in this state. But unfortunately, to date, now eight weeks in, halfway through the legislative session, less than $10 million uh, necessary to fill a $900 million budget hole, less than $10 million has been put forth on the floor of the House of Representatives for an up or down vote to help balance the budget and take care of our core functions of government. Our caucus is growing ever more frustrated with the inaction from the majority party. Last week, we rolled out our plan, uh, which we call the Restoring Oklahoma Plan. Since they refused to step up and lead, our caucus has done that. And we are grateful to the citizens of the state of Oklahoma who, through their own grassroots efforts, have been contacting, calling, and emailing their elected officials, asking them to support all or parts of the Restoring Oklahoma Plan. And we want to continue that call. We want citizens to know that, that we've heard them that the Republicans in charge have heard from them, and we want them to continue to ask their elected officials to look at our plan and to find ways to, to reach across the aisle and to support the Restoring Oklahoma plan so that we can restore those cuts to those core functions of government that everybody in the state of Oklahoma believes we need to support. Unfortunately, instead of actually reaching out and supporting the Restoring Oklahoma plan, what we saw was a Rob Peter to pay Paul plan. Uh, this week, just yesterday, uh, in, a, in a move that was indicative of, of um, their inability to govern and pass a constitutionally balanced budget, we saw the House Republicans and the governor offer up a plan to, to take $34 million out of the unclaimed property fund and the rainy day fund in order to just make sure that DHS can meet its needs, not for next year's budget, but for this year's, the current fiscal year's budget. We now have no money no money in the rainy day fund. The governor, when she first got elected in uh, 2010, uh, used to say that uh, Governor Henry left her with only about $3.37 in the rainy day fund, and she was going to do her level best to ensure that when she left in 2018, it wasn't the case. But today, we have fewer dollars in the rainy day fund than we did when Governor Fallon started, and our state's in a bigger hole than what it was when Governor Fallon started. And that's all not because of the price of oil, but it's all because of the lack of leadership. Uh, in this particular building. So our caucus believes uh, that the, the accessing of the rainy day fund to getting it down to zero is a, in essence borrowing it, the, it's become the state's payday lender is, in essence, uh, borrowing money just to keep the lights on. We believe that what they've done could be unconstitutional. There are four specific areas um, uh, under which you can access funding for the rainy day fund, the constitutional reserve fund as it's otherwise known, and none of those involve balancing the state's budget. Uh, for to, to keep the, the, the lights on, as it were, during a legislative session. They all require uh, executive action or a vote on the, on the floor of the House of Representatives. And, this, and we believe that Preston Dorflinger's use of the Rainy Day Fund um, as, um, as sort of a, uh, a payday lender, as it were, is illegal. And, and we're going to ask the Attorney General to investigate that and to give us an Attorney General's opinion as to whether or not those funds have been in, improperly accessed. Likewise, uh, with $30 million coming out of the unclaimed property fund, uh, that brings the total to over $66 million um, used this in this year's budget just from the unclaimed property fund. There were $72 million in the fund for all of last year. We've essentially used $66 million of it just to balance the budget. That ought to be concerning for Oklahoma citizens because what the Republicans have said through their actions is they understand we need revenue. But instead of finding recurring revenue, they find one-time sources like the Unclaimed Property Fund and raid it in a desperate move to balance the budget. Instead of bringing up true additional, uh, truly revenue-raising measures like restoring gross production tax cuts, restoring income tax cuts, um, and, uh, and eliminating wasteful tax credits and exemptions, they instead raid the Unclaimed Property Fund in, in an effort to, uh, to, uh, to put the budget together with duct tape and bailing wire, uh, and it's just not working. And so our hope is that in the next several weeks, the Republican majority will do the right thing. We'll reach out across the aisle and pick portions or all of our Restoring Oklahoma plan and get serious about balancing the budget. Because to date, uh, the, the, the lack of seriousness, the lack of conversation around significant revenues ought to be concerning and troubling for all the citizens of the state of Oklahoma. 
It is clear to all of us in the legislature that the Republican majority does not have a plan to meet the statutorily required date of April 1st to present a budget for public schools in the state of Oklahoma. They've not done it uh, in, e in each of the last um, six or seven years that, that the folks in charge have been in control of the legislature and uh, the fact that they've not offered up any real revenues uh, is a sign, should be a sign to the education community that they're going to violate state law again. There appears to be no sense of urgency on, the half, on behalf of the Republican majority to try to find revenues to truly balance the budget. Uh, a word is, is that uh, the Republican majority has been going around their caucus trying to ask their members whether or not they would support any particular revenue measure, uh, whether they could get 51 members of their own caucus to support any particular revenue measure. And the word we're getting back is that um, there has been no consensus around any one, let alone enough to balance a $900 million budget hole, but not around e even one revenue raising measure within their caucus. And so uh, it, it, um, uh, you either have to assume one of two things. There's either a willful, willful ignorance on behalf of the Republican majority as to the current crisis in education, um, or you have to assume uh, that they are um, intentionally trying to harm state government by, by, by strangling it through, through uh, reducing revenues for core services. We'll meet again on Monday, and, um, and we'll, we'll be in appropriations on Monday, and, and to date, uh, we've not seen any revenue measures uh, of any significance that have been uh, placed on the appropriations calendar on Monday, and certainly nothing on the House floor. I met earlier this week with uh, several, a couple of members of the Republican majority who came to me and said, we want to know more about your Restoring Oklahoma plan because they had been getting a number of emails and phone calls from their constituents. Uh, that was an encouraging sign. In my conversations with those members of the, of the Republican majority who will remain nameless, uh, they, were, um, uh, they, they were somewhat supportive of our ideas. Um, however, when I asked whether or not they would step out in front and try to lead that, lead that, um, that charge, within their caucus, they were a little more uh, cautious in, in, in saying that they would do something like that. And, and that's what you see right now. You see a lack of leadership. We're waiting on Speaker McCall to offer up his plan. The governor's got a plan. We've got a plan. Lieutenant Governor Lamb doesn't have a plan. But Speaker McCall's plan involves cigarette taxes that he wouldn't even put up for a vote on the floor of the House of Representatives. And when it was up for a floor, floor vote last year, he voted against it. And, and so uh, to date, we, there's no plan. The Speaker of the House has no plan. He keeps telling folks that he may have one, uh, but it's so good, apparently he wants to keep it secret. Our plan, we believe in, and we believe that it, will, it, it, it can withstand the scrutiny of the light of day. And so we put it out for the public to, to analyze and to review, and what we've, what we've heard back from the public is overwhelming support for it. And if the Speaker of the House has a plan that he believes is a good idea and a good plan, then he needs to lay it out there for not just for us to see, but all of Oklahoma citizens to see. And if it's something that we can get behind, we'll do it. But right now, uh, telling us you have a plan but refusing to share it makes us want to believe that you really don't have one at all. Last year we had a $1.3 billion budget hole, and the only revenue measure that they really put on the floor was a cigarette tax. The rest of them all came from um, r robbing rainy day funds and increasing fees on, on our citizens, things like that. And again, here we are again this year with some more fee increases on a few things to access the courthouse or we're going to raise fees on people who buy electric vehicles, but not really getting serious about the core, f the core problems. Understand we're in this mess because of a billion and a half dollars worth of income tax cuts, $2 billion for the tax credits and exemptions, and one of the most generous gross production tax cuts of any major oil and gas producing state in the nation. And they have refused to address those. They didn't address it last year, and we had devastating cuts for core services. They're not addressing it this year, and we're looking at more devastating cuts for core services. As we speak, there are subcommittee appropriations. There are appropriation subcommittees meeting right now not to talk about ways to balance the budget, not to talk about ways to find new revenues to take care of DHS and to take care of health care, to take care of education. No, they're meeting right now to talk about how you cut 14.5% from DHS, health care, and common education. That ought to be alarming to the citizens of Oklahoma. While our caucus met to find revenues to balance the budget and to avoid budget cuts, they're meeting right now in open, in an open public, open forum to find out, to discuss how you cut state, state government and core services even deeper. That is disturbing, and it ought to be concerning to every citizen in the state of Oklahoma.